Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and the open beta. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So today we're taking a look at the infantry tab of the Russian deck. Big, big tab. Okay, lots of stuff to go through in here. Remind me when we get down here. I know you can't, but I need to remind myself that there are a couple of unique vehicles as well for transports. Two sides to this. The infantry that come with the, well, they're basically the infantry that come with the armoured part of the deck, or the armoured brigade, and then the rest of the VDVs. So, starting up here at the top, we have an automatic grenade launcher squad. These guys have 40mm grenade launchers. Simple as that. They've got a couple of guns and two 40mm grenade launchers. Quite a good squad. Very effective against infantry, 800m range. You'll have seen these guys ripping infantry to shreds out in the open, and obviously, again, firing these things rapidly at a building does quite a bit of damage. So, not a terrible squad. Good at ranged engagement of infantry. Obviously, effective range on these things is 50 to 100 meters, so once things get close, you aren't exactly popping off those grenades anymore. So, they're good at a distance. Now, vehicles wise, let's have a look through the vehicles. I think it's important just to go through these straight away. The B10 Kurgnets. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Never mind. Quite a fancy, modern looking vehicle. Quite well armoured as well. Decent armour. Speed, again, is uh, 80. Maybe this is a Russian thing then, and the Russian decks, they have faster tracked transports maybe that is the case i'm just used to it being 70 from the us deck so as standard this can carry eight people and comes with a cord hmg you can upgrade it with an active protection system on there which has four shots for that active protection system and this thing is by the way amphibious Weapons wise, you can upgrade it to a Boomerang BM module. This gives it a 30mm auto cannon. The usual there. It's got AP, kinetic rounds, and also HE heat rounds. It also has a cornet on that Boomerang module. 1600m range, 1200mm of heat penetration. Very strong missile if it hits. Very strong. You can also upgrade it to the Epoca module. This thing has a 57mm cannon. Again, it's got the armor piercing and the HE rounds. Obviously, a bit bigger blast radius on these bad boys. For the heat rounds, at least. It has the cornet again. Still got that. No change there, but it also has the Bulat. Bulat missiles, eight of them. This thing is a missile with 1,100 meter range, but it aims at vehicles and infantry. You see the little ones that pop up on the back there? I think they're mainly designed for like firing off at infantry. Reload time zero, magazine size A, aim time three to four. I don't know if it. It could fire them all off at once, to be honest. I don't think, even though I have taken this in, I've ever got in a position to fire them all off at something. Because obviously the range is quite short. You have to get close to use it. I don't think... No, there's no difference in numbers of coordinates and stuff, so that's all the same. Basically, if you go up to the top one there, you're getting the 57 mil, and you're getting the Bulats as well. Next up, the T-15 Barbaris. It's a tank. Don't be fooled. It's a tank, okay? I know it's a transport. But it's basically a tank. Look at the armour on this thing. The front armour is better than some top-end tanks. It is literally a tank shell. It doesn't have a big tank cannon, but it has a 30mm cannon. And it has the Cornet missiles as well. So, this is really strong. So, if you see someone playing a Russian deck and they're playing the meta, I promise you they're going to have a load of T-15s in it. 
They will bring multiple squads with multiple T-15s. They will fill out some of this section with it because they are that hard to kill. I mean, even the top armor is 80 and 120. It's going to take a lot of punishment, this thing. And then, obviously, the weapons options. You can have the Boomerang BM module with a corner. Standard stuff, same as we just saw. 30mm auto cannon, PKT in a corner. Really strong. Or you can upgrade it to the Kinzel module for free. That's right, I said free. And that has the 57mm cannon. It has a PKT. And it has attacker missiles. Which are 1,800 meter range. Nowhere near the penetration. But still, it's got attacker. And it is, as I say... 1800 meter range and again i think i mentioned this in the recon video someone has said somewhere and i can't remember where i read it that these are top attack missiles in terms of their actual mode of function even though it doesn't say they will attack top armor every time i cannot find anything to corroborate this and i can't convince myself if that's what's happening in game but just to say these are very long range missiles so the reason for upgrading is the fact that you get a better cannon. I'm not sure why it's free. I assume because the missile is considered not as good. Because this gets four cornets. Whereas this only gets two attacker missiles. I'm guessing that's why it's not costing more. Because the boomerang gives you more missiles. But I'm not certain. But this thing is ridiculous it's also got an active protection system as standard by the way two smokes and active protection system as standard it is obscenely good so if you want a sweaty meta deck you want some of these in there it is just that strong then you got a k16 boomerang i like this because it's really fast in fact the barbaris is 80 again so it's an extremely fast tracked vehicle, again. Anyhow, the Boomerang, really fast wheel vehicle. I like this just for whizzing around the map. Uh, comes as standard with a cord, so nothing special. Can be upgraded to up armoured for five points. Makes a bit of a difference. You can give it the active protection system. And you can give it up armour and the active protection system if you want for a little bit extra. 40 points, quite expensive, but obviously does help to some extent with the armour situation. Weapons package can be upgraded to its namesake, the Boomerang module, which gives it the 30mm cannon, the PKT, and the Cornet missile launchers. I've taken this in, upgraded with the Boomerang system, just because I think it's really fun to whiz around the map, and it does do quite a bit of damage. And obviously, having those long-range Cornets, you can keep it out of range of tanks and still do some damage. Just bear in mind that, you know, if you're playing meta, this is obviously absolute garbage, compared to the Barbaris. The T-15 just craps all over it because of that armor. Obviously, it costs the same as a tank, but it's a tank. It is literally a tank. There's no getting around it. Someone said in one of the comments on the other channel that they didn't like this because the transports cost as much as a tank. The reason this one costs as much as a tank is because it is a tank. It is literally on a tank chassis. That's why it's so expensive, because it's that good. If you made this cheap, it would be ridiculous. It has to be expensive. Anyhow, moving on to the Javadi Modestrelki, I would pronounce that as. Obviously, it's Modestrelki, I know that word, but Javadi, Gavadi, I, I'm not sure how that would be pronounced, but there you go, I'm, I've given it a go. So, standard infantry squad so to speak. Eight-man squad, AK-12, six of them, decent weapon. Two underslung grenade launchers, very nice. The RPG 28 times 4 This is a really strong RPG. 100 millimeters of heat penetration. It is really, really strong. You only get four of them, but that feels very strong for one of these RPGs that the infantry get. Obviously short range, but you get these near an enemy vehicle, even a tank, and it is going to have to run the hell away, because that is scary. And they also get two 
PKPs, so two machine guns. Quite a heavily armed squad, really. Good line infantry squad. Very good for running up on enemy vehicles. Same loadout in terms of the vehicle options, so we won't go into those. Next up are the Ingenieri Sturmovsky. Sturmovsky? Something like that. They're engineers, basically. Cool, cool icon, by the way. I really like the icon. So these guys, as you can probably imagine, engineers in this game, generally speaking, are anti-infantry. No real difference here, I don't think. So you've got the AKMs, eight-man squad again. You've got two GP-34s. You've got RPG-7V2s. These are heat rounds that target infantry, vehicles, and helicopters. Pretty big blast radius. Decent penetration as well at 105 millimeters of heat pen. Basically, it's anti-infantry squad. Decent armor there at 10 as well. You can see they look pretty heavily armored. And they have a couple of KSKs down there as well, which are shotguns with a 12GA slug. So we've seen the shotguns, obviously, with the Americans, but this is more of an automatic shotgun. So quite a uh, effective anti-infantry squad again there. Next up, or the last but not least, I should say, of the little selection we have from the Armoured Brigade are the PZRK Verba. Again, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing Verba right. So these are a four-man team. They're a man-pad team. That's portable anti-air, basically. So they've got four AK-12s and two Verbas, which means they can fire off two missiles at once, which is quite a strong thing. Because I think if you remember the Stinger squad over on the American side only get one Stinger. So they can only fire one missile at a time. This can fire two. Quite expensive. 100 points to bring this in. But uh, 2,100 meter range, it's a pretty, it's, it's a nice missile. They're really good, but they are very expensive. That's the only thing you have to bear in mind. They are very expensive, but a very good squad nonetheless. No, no options here. And you'll notice with all of these, there's no upgrade options, no switch out options or anything. Now on to the VDV. So the VDV are the airborne forces. First up, we have another automatic grenade launcher. This time we have a 30 mil grenade launcher. We've seen these in uh, vehicles and things before. So, again, two grenade launchers, very effective at killing infantry in the open and in buildings. Not very effective against vehicles, but they can fire at them. They also have a couple of AK-74s. Vehicle options are the BTRD. Again, a familiar vehicle. It usually has something strapped on top of it. Has a PKT as default, but you can upgrade it to a Cord and AGS. So same transport vehicle that we saw in the recon video. Nothing else can be said about that, really. The BTR MDM Rakushka? Rakushka? Again, I'm, gu I'm guessing at the pronunciation here. Apologies. 15-man transport, plenty of people fitting in there, bit slower at only 70, can be airdropped in. So BTRD can be airdropped, BTR MDM can be airdropped. Obviously, as I say, these are the airborne forces, so we're heading into stuff that can be airdropped in. This thing, again, a weapons upgrade package, so this is where we're getting into something that is a little bit different. So a bit like the BTRDs, this thing can have stuff equipped to the top of it. So one option is the ZU-23-2. This is an anti-air gun. It can fire at ground units as well. It fires heat penetration rounds. It can fire at infantry, vehicles, helicopters, and aircraft. And it is still para-dropped. So you can para-drop it or air-drop it with that weapon equipped. So if you want some early anti-air that can carry some infantry and stuff and drop it behind enemy lines or get out there early, there you go. You do have an option. Can be upgraded to the ZU-23-2M, which is basically the same thing, but with a bit of guidance on there as well. So that has two guys sat on it. And I don't know if the stats change. Effective range 900 meters. 
Effective range 1000 meters. So there's the big difference. Effective range changes. And then up at the top here, the ZU-23TUM with some Iglas strapped to the top as well. So, just in case the ZU gun wasn't enough, stick a couple of Iglas on there as well, which have 2000 meter range and can hit both aircraft and helicopters. It does look like a bit of a silly unit because that, that is literally just stuck on top. Usually there's some wires holding it down as well. But uh, yeah, there you go. Basically, it is now called the BTR Shrizette because it's got all that stuff equipped to it. Next up is the BMD-2. Again, we saw this in the Recon tab. Same options here. 30 mil cannon and the PKT. You can upgrade it to have a Conker's ATGM. 1600 meter range, 650 millimeters heat penetration, or we can upgrade it to the corner, 1600 meters range, and 1200 millimeters of heat penetration. Again, can be airdropped as well, something to bear in mind. Not a bad unit, once you upgrade it with those cornets, not my favorite choice to bring in, but certainly an option there. Then you've got the BMD 4M. Again, we saw this in the recon video. This has a 100 millimeter cannon that comes with. Heat rounds, 100mm penetration there, and good blast radius, so effective against infantry. And it also has an anti-tank missile in there that fires from the main cannon. 750mm heat penetration at 1500m range, so pretty decent. Still has the 30mm cannon, which we've seen before. Nothing special about that. And we also have a machine gun on there. Armor package can be upgraded to be upper armoured. Minor increase there, nothing to write home about. Do note that if you give it the armor upgrade, it can no longer be power dropped in because it is too heavy. And finally, we have the MI-8 AMTSH. This is a variant of a transport chopper. It has a few different pylons going on here, so... This is slightly different to the Recon one. So the Recon one, you don't have quite as many options. So the Recon one has an inner pylon with some machine guns on you can't remove them here we can change it so on the outer pylons we can have concon anti-tank missiles which aren't an option incidentally on the recon one so the recon transport doesn't get these so these are concon missiles 1600 meter range 750 millimeter heat penetration and the other option is the iglas so the iglas obviously anti-air missiles good against helicopters can hit aircraft as well Middle pylons, you have slightly different options again. We have the S8 rockets, which we had before. You can have the GSH-23L pods. So these are gun pods. Uh, we saw these before. It does say they can attack aircraft, which is absolutely insane. I don't believe that the helicopter could fire them at aircraft, so we'll just pretend that's not there. It can fire, obviously, at other targets. You have the option of the S13 rockets. Bigger rockets, 130 millimeters. Obviously, bigger blast radius and everything. And you also have the option of four of the Concon anti-tank missiles once more. Exactly the same as we just saw. 1600 meters, 750 millimeters heat penetration. And then on the inner pylons, you can either have the rockets, the S8 rockets, or you can have the S13 rockets. So the big difference here is you get an outer, middle, and inner pylon. Whereas on the recon one, or the one that's an option there, you don't get one of these. You only get two. And then you get some guns strapped to the top of the actual pylon as well. It's weird that it's so different, the setup there. But it is what it is. Lots of options there. It's a transport. I don't want it to be too expensive. I might well just take all the weapons off it. Maybe get some rockets on. Or maybe the anti-air ones to shoot down enemy choppers that are bringing in their infantry. But that's that. So, next up is the VDV DSH. A very standard infantry squad, basically. Standard line infantry, let's call them. Five-man squad. Decent amount of armor. AK-74 RMOs. A single underslung grenade launcher. The RPG-7 D3. Effective against vehicles and helicopters. 650 millimeters of heat penetration. Do not shoot at infantry. And a PKP-M machine gun. So, very standard squad. Nothing special going on there. And nothing special to mention with their transports. 
Next up are the VDV Igla Squad, a five-man squad. They come with four AK-74, a, a GP-34 underscore grenade launcher, a single Igla D. So these are more along the lines of the Americans' Stinger Squad, aren't they? The Mech Rifle Squad that had the Stinger. Five-man squad, one Igla. Igla has 2,000 meter range. Can obviously only fire one missile at a time, so not quite as effective as the Verba squad. And they have a machine gun squad there. They do have a special BTRZD Scrisette transport vehicle. So it's the BTRD with a Scrisette strapped to the top of it. We've just seen that on the BTR MDM, obviously, because that comes with a variant of this. But this is, uh, again, Scrisette. You can upgrade it to have the M2 version for longer range. And you can also upgrade it to have the Iglas on there as well. So exactly the same as we saw, just on a different transport. And again, even fully upgraded, this can be dropped in. Next squad we're going to look at are the VDV Cornet Squad. And finally, after having no upgrades, we can have an upgrade here. So the VDV Cornet Squad, they have... Five AK-74s, and they have two Cornets, so they can fire two missiles at a time. Pretty scary. Standard Cornets, a 1600 meter range, and have 1000 millimeters of heat penetration. They can be upgraded to the Cornet M. So, the Cornet M, same AK-74s, but the Cornet M here, again, they get two of them, so they can fire two at a time. These are still the Lead Pursuit Missile, 1600 meter range, but they also have 1,200 millimeters of heat penetration. Very strong squad. Very good at defending an area sat in a building. They will attract artillery. Because they will literally lock down an area from incoming vehicles. And they have a special case transport. The BTRD robot. BTRD robot. It's a BTRD with a cornet strapped to the top. Cornet missile, 600 meters, 1,000 millimeters heat penetration, and can be upgraded to the Cornet M. So literally, it's exactly the same as the infantry that come with it. It can have an upgrade to the next level. Five points, pretty cheap as well. Um, again, all airdroppable, and you'll notice that all these VDV units are also airdroppable. You can parachute them in. And the final squad here are the VDV Meta Squad. So VDV Meta Squad, again, they can be dropped in by parachute. Again, a five-man squad, AK-74s. They come with a cord heavy machine gun. For some reason, they get a cord. I don't know why. And then they get a Metis launcher. This is the longer range launcher that the Spetsnaz in the recon tab don't get. 1,100 meter range and 900 millimeters of heat penetration. And there you have it, the infantry available to the russians quite a lot of options there not many options in terms of choice of loadout it's literally only the cornets there that get a squad loadout option everything else is pretty standardized but plenty of options there really and obviously a couple of man pad anti-air team options which i think is really important in this game sometimes both the verba and the igla so an expensive and a cheap option but there you have it thank you very much for watching please do like share subscribe i'll see you all soon for some more broken arrow